everyone. Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and talk about the code before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, so we're, today we're talking about dual function technology, and specifically the dual function breaker. We're going to talk about what it is, and more, more importantly, what it's not. So what is dual function technology? Well, a dual function breaker performs AFCI and GFCI technology built into one breaker, not to be confused with a combination arc fault breaker. And I think that's one of the biggest misnomers in our industry is that people think a dual function breaker is a combination breaker or a combination breaker is a dual function breaker. Let me explain the two. So a combination AFCI breaker does two different types of arc fault sensing. It senses for parallel and for series arcs, but it does arc fault technology only. A dual function breaker does combination AFCI and GFCI technology built in all into one. And what AFCI technology is, is arc fault circuit interrupter, and it senses the sine wave. And if the sine wave goes into a pattern that looks like an arc, it will shut the circuit off. GFCI technology is ground fault circuit interrupter technology, and it is counting the amperage of the circuit. So if one amp goes out on the hot, one amp needs to come back in on the neutral. And if it doesn't, with a discrepancy of four to six milliamps, depending on the device, it will turn that circuit off and hopefully save someone's life or the property. So that is the difference between a combination arc fault and a dual function breaker. They are not the same thing, and that's something I wanted to point out to you. So now let's talk about the breaker itself. So when we look at this breaker here, we'll notice right on the front here, there is a test button. That's going to be if the breaker, if you want to test it and make sure that it's functioning properly, you'll test it, and then it will put this handle tie in the trip position. If this is in the in this picture, if it's in the up position, this breaker's on. If it's in the down position, it's off. And if it's in the middle position, it's going to be tripped. On a lot of these breakers, if it does trip, you have to turn it passed off and then back on. I say passed off because on a lot of brands, you'll turn it off and then you'll push it back. That will physically reset it. And then you'll turn it forward and turn it back on. Now let's take a look at right here on the front. Now, depending on what brand your breaker is, sometimes right here on the front, they will put the torque spec. That's how tight you're going to tighten these screws. And we'll talk about them in just a moment. Sometimes on this front, it will tell you what size wire you're legally allowed to use for this breaker because you're not allowed to use all wire sizes. So this breaker might only hold 14 to 10 gauge wire, but it might hold 14 up to maybe 8 gauge wire. Then when you get into 60, 70, and 80 amp breakers, they might hold from 14 gauge all the way up to 6 gauge and maybe even higher depending on the brand. But you're only legally allowed to put the size wire for the size breaker. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the breaker. On this specific brand, they have most of that information I was talking about right here on the side. It's going to tell you what wire size is allowed to go to the breaker. It's also going to tell you the torque spec, what type of wire you're allowed to use. And a lot of them even have a little strip gauge built into the side somewhere here on the breaker. I can't see it on this one. I may have it covered up. But they'll have a strip gauge to tell you how much of the wire to strip to go behind the lugs. Before we move on, I want to jump back over to the front and talk about the lugs. So on this specific breaker, one lug is right here on the front, and that's where you'll put your hot wire. And the other lug is actually hidden underneath here. You can't see it in this picture, and that's going to be for your neutral. On this specific breaker, of course, always follow your manufacturer specifications, but you're going to terminate the neutral wire directly to the breaker as well. Then as we move around the breaker, we're going to find that there is, on this brand, there's a neutral pigtail. And this neutral pigtail here will actually terminate to the neutral bar of the panel. Now let's go ahead and move around back. So when we get around back, in this case, it has the, I'm going to do it from a side profile, but in this case, it has the little foot right here. This little foot for this style and this brand is going to be what clasps to hold the breaker in once you clip it in. Then when we move around the back, this part here is the business end. This is actually going to clip into the bus bar and allow the current to flow through it. Let's see if we can get a side profile shot. You'll see there is some little, uh, it's, there's a clamp right here and a clamp right here, and literally it just smushes into the bus bar, and between this foot and that clamp, it holds it into place, and then of course we'll put the cover on it. Then when we move around the breaker, you'll find maybe a little bit more information. The biggest thing I wanna say about dual function technology before we get off for today 
is I want to say that it is the best thing that has ever happened to electricity since the original circuit breaker. It is a circuit breaker that it, I'm not saying it negates bad work, but if it's miswired, touching, arcing, sparking, or leaking, it's going to shut the circuit off as well as it has normal circuit breaker technology built inside of it. So if there's an overcurrent or a you know massive short circuit, it's also going to trip that breaker. But I just want to encourage it everywhere that you can, make sure that you're using dual function technology. And let me explain why. Especially with all the different wires that we now have in our home and all the different places and the different ways that things can be wired. But if you will put in dual function technology, you are putting in technology today that will be there tomorrow, the next day, 10 years from now. When someone comes and replaces that breaker, they're more likely to put back in a dual function breaker. So what this is doing is saving lives after you leave the home. This could save a life 20 years from now from somebody, you know, they have a water leak upstairs in the house, some little kids downstairs in the bath, you know, it's coming down the wall, the current's leaking and, you know, you know, it saves somebody's life. So we don't know all the lives that will be saved from these dual function breakers, but I assure you that it will continue on long after you have installed it. It could be after you're dead and gone, you save somebody's life. So I'm all about sowing good seed, you know, making sure what whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's all about doing good and knowing that good is going to come back your way. And I truly believe that. And dual function technology is one of the easiest ways that we can do that. Yes, they're expensive, but the customer pays for the cost. And in most areas, you're already required to have AFCI technology. So you spend a few more dollars, you get dual function technology, and you're able to make the home that much safer. I am a super huge promoter of dual function technology. Now, do they work in every single situation? No, they don't. But this is my method and this is how we do it. We go ahead and put it on dual function technology. And then if it trips, we'll dial back if the code will allow us. But most homes, I've went into homes that were built in 1940, put dual function breakers on every single circuit and every single one of them held. And I've never had a callback, you know, on that specific house. So I rarely have callbacks. If it's not tripping when I leave, I don't think I can name on one hand the times I've had to go back and deal with a dual function breaker after I've left. But I don't know how many times it will save a life from here and forevermore. I hope you guys have a great day. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. I want to see you win. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you grow. And if there's anything that I can do to help you do that, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.